Hello learners, in this video, I am going to discuss with you one of the theory of experiment potentiometric titration of strong acid versus strong base. This titration comes under potentiometric method of analysis. Such type of analysis is based on the measurement of EMF of electrochemical cell called cell potential denoted by EC expressed in whole. Therefore, in this video, I am going to discuss with you the theory related to the electrochemical cell in part first. Also, after completion of the experiment, you have to plot a graph. Therefore, in the second part of this video, I am going to discuss with you the theory related to the graph of this experiment. Now, let's discuss part first as this is the potentiometric titration of strong acid versus strong base. This required a electrochemical cell. Cell representation of this electrochemical cell is Platinum solid slash Hg2Cl2 solid slash saturated KCl double slash HA comma quinidron powder slash platinum solid. Let's analyze this cell representation as this cell representation is combination of two electrodes, the reference electrode and the indicator electrode and a salt bridge. The saturated calomel electrode is act as a reference electrode while the quinidron electrode act as a indicator electrode in this cell representation. The saturated calomel electrode comes under metal metal insoluble salt type of electrode while the quinidron electrode comes under redox type of electrode. As the saturated calomel electrode is present on the left hand side of the cell representation, it is known as anodic half cell on which oxidation reaction takes place. The quinidron electrode is present on the right hand side of this cell representation Therefore, this is called as a cathodic half cell on which reduction reaction is takes place. The salt bridge that present in between two half cell. The role of the salt bridge is to connect the anodic half cell and cathodic half cell. Let's see how to construct this electrochemical cell. As per the cell representation, for anodic half cell, we will take one beaker. Then this beaker is filled with the saturated KCl solution and the Saturated calomel electrode is dipped into the saturated KCl solution. This is the anodic half cell. For cathodic half cell, we will take another beaker. This beaker is filled with 10 ml acid solution and 50 ml water. Then we will add a pinch of quinidron powder into the same solution. Then the platinum electrode is dipped into the acid solution. Then as per cell representation, the KCl salt bridge is dipped into both half cell. If you observe the cell representation, then you notice that the anodic half cell has negative sign and cathodic half cell has positive sign. Therefore, the saturated calomel electrode is connected to the negative pole of the digital potentiometer while platinum electrode is connected to the positive terminal of this digital potentiometer. As soon as the saturated calomel electrode and platinum electrode is connected to the digital potentiometer, the digital potentiometer shows some value in Holt on his display. This value is nothing but the EMF of this electrochemical cell denoted by letter EC. Now let's talk about the quinhydron electrode. This quinhydron electrode is an indicator electrode. What is indicator electrode? The electrode whose EMF varies with concentration of H plus ions. Here, the concentration of H plus ions from the acid solution varies, then EMF is also varies. Such type of variation is sensed by this indicator electrode, quinhydron electrode. Let's see the electrode reaction. As you know that the quinhydron electrode has hydroquinone and quinone. The hydroquinone accept two electron and form quinone and two H plus ions. For this reaction, the reaction quotient is activity of Q into activity square of H plus divided by activity of H two Q. This is the reaction quotient. Now electrode potential for quinidron electrode. For that purpose, we use Nernst equation: EQ slash H two Q is equal to E zero Q slash H two Q plus two point three naught three R T upon two F log base to ten activity of Q into activity square of H plus divided by activity of H two Q. In this reaction, in this log term, this quantity is the reaction quotient. R is gas constant, T is absolute temperature, F is Faraday's constant. This is the standard reduction potential of quinidron electrode, and this is the electrode potential of quinhydron electrode. Now observe this log term. In this log term, the activity of Q is equal to activity of H to Q and has value unit. Therefore, this term becomes 1, this term becomes 1, then the log term becomes as log of activity square of H plus. Here, the square that means this 2 comes to left hand side, then it becomes 
to log of activity of H plus. We know that the definition of pH. pH is negative logarithm base to 10 of activity of H plus ions. So log of H plus is nothing but the minus pH. Therefore, we replace this term with minus pH and 2 as it is. So here we can replace this log term by minus 2 pH. Then we will get E of Q slash H2Q which is equal to E0 of Q slash H2Q minus 2.3 RT upon F pH. Here we will get the relationship between the quinhydron electrode potential and the pH. And this pH is depend upon the concentration of H plus ions. If concentration of H plus ion varies, pH varies then the electrode potential varies. This is the principle of the quinhydron electrode. Okay, so EMF of this quinhydron electrode is depend upon the pH and the pH is, pH is depend upon the concentration of H plus ions. Therefore, this quinhydron electrode is used as a indicator electrode. Now, you remember this equation because we are going to use this equation in next session. The second electrode is the reference electrode. The saturated column electrode is the reference electrode. Why it is used as a reference electrode? Because it is the electrode of known potential. We know the potential of saturated column electrode. Therefore, we use here as a reference electrode. So this is the saturated column electrode. This is the wire. This is platinum wire. So it is platinum. Then comes to the mercury. So this is the mercury. This is the mercury. Then mercurous chloride solid. Mercurous chloride solid. This is the white color mercurous chloride solid. And remaining portion is filled with the saturated KCl solution. So this is the saturated columnar electrode. This is the representation and the EMF. Known EMF is plus 0.2458 volt. This is the actual saturated columnar electrode. When you connect the saturated columnar electrode with another half cell through salt bridge, then you have to you have to dip this saturated columnar electrode in a beaker containing saturated solution of KCl. Then this whole beaker with this saturated columnar electrode is called as a saturated columnar electrode. Now, moving towards the next part. That is the graphical part of this potentiometric titration. In potentiometric titration, the equivalence point is determined by using two methods. First one is the classical method. Second one is the derivative method. Therefore, we draw two graphs. The first graph is EMF in Holt versus volume of NOH added in ML. This graph is according to the classical method. This graph is used for determination of approximate equivalence point. Let's find out answer of the question why EMF of this potentiometric titration is non-zero at zero ml addition of NOH. Let's see. Initially, we will fill this beaker with HCl solution. That means H plus and Cl minus ions are present in the beaker. Observe the concentration. Then the concentration of both H plus and Cl minus are high initially. As concentration of H plus ions are high, then the EMF is also high. Okay, let's see. Concentration of H plus ions high, the pH low, so EMF increases. Therefore, at 0 ml addition of NOH, you will get non-zero value of EMF. Let's see. The total EMF of the cell is the ER minus EL. EMF of right hand side electrode minus EMF of left hand side electrode. EMF of right hand side electrode means EMF of quinhydron electrode. EMF of left hand side electrode means EMF of saturated columnar electrode. Therefore, this equation becomes as EC is equal to EQ minus ESCE. We already saw the value of EMF of quinhydron electrode in previous slide. Therefore, we put the, this value into this equation. Then we will get EC as it is. Value of EQ is E0Q minus 2.3 RT upon F pH minus ESCE. If you rearrange this equation for pH, then we will get equation pH is equal to E0Q minus E of ESCE minus EC divided by 0.0001984T. Let's see the terms. E0Q is the standard electrode potential of twin hydrogen electrode. ESCE means EMF of saturated columnar electrode. EC is the EMF of this cell. If you observe this equation, E0Q it is fixed. ESCE it is fixed. Only EC and pH is variable. If you rewrite this equation by putting the value of temperature 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius. We will get pH is equal to E0Q minus ESCE minus EC divided by 0.0591. If you observe the relation between pH and EC, then we will get inverse relation. What is meant by inverse relation? If value of pH increases, value of EC decreases. If value of pH decreases, value of EC increases. The opposite relation. From this, we 
write one important relation concentration of H plus is directly proportional to 1 upon pH is directly proportional to the EMF how we can read this if concentration of H plus increases pH decreases because these two quantities have inverse relation EMF increases because in between these two quantities direct relation is there therefore if concentration of H plus increases then EMF is increases because of this here at this situation at 0 ml of addition of NOH initially concentration of H plus is high therefore pH that is low therefore EMF high because of this reason at 0 ml addition of NOH the EMF is non-zero it is high so we plot this point at higher EMF value then what happen when we add 1 ml of NOH into the HCl solution there are two possibilities either EMF increases or decreases let's find out when we add NOH into HCl solution then neutralization reaction takes place result into a NaCl salt and water the neutralization reaction leads to decrease in concentration of H plus ions as concentration of H plus ion decreases pH increases therefore EMF decreases therefore after addition of 1 ml of NOH into HCl EMF get decreases the graph look like this when volume of NOH added increases the EMF is decreases why because concentration of H plus ion decreases pH increases therefore EMF decreases when we proceed further when we add 1 ml NOH further then the neutralization of HCl takes place that leads to decrease in concentration of H plus ions and here decrease the EMF therefore the EMF is decreases likewise when we observe the graph here we will observe that the small decrease in EMF so this region where you find that the small decrease in EMF it is due to the formation of buffer between HCl and NaCl so this is called as a buffer zone this buffer zone is observed due to the HCl and NaCl buffer that resist change in pH if the change in pH experience resist from this buffer HCl and NaCl then the HCl concentration also experience resist therefore here the concentration of H plus ion decreases that value is very very small and because of that EMF is also decreases but at very very small value also at this buffer zone concentration of H plus divided by concentration of OH minus ions this is the ratio that ratio changes slightly therefore pH is also changes slightly so the change in pH is small therefore EMF change is also small therefore we will observe this type of buffer zone when we add further ml by ml NOH into HCl solution the neutralization of HCl by NOH takes place this reaction proceed until all H plus ion get consumed when all H plus ions consumed this is the situation where no any H plus ion left at this situation the neutralization reaction is completed situation you will get a inflection point that means sudden decrease in EMF in a graph this inflection point is called as a equivalence point so at equivalence point the neutralization of HCl by NOH is completed at this point all H plus ion get consumed above this point there is no any H plus ions the concentration of H plus and OH minus ions are equal so this happen at equivalence point after equivalence point when we add NOH just we add OH minus ions into the HCl solution further addition of OH minus ions just increase OH minus ion concentration obviously the increase in OH minus ion concentration is the thing but the increase in pH value as pH value increases EMF decreases so similar trend you will observe here after equivalence point you will observe in graph decrease in EMF it is due to only increase in concentration of OH minus ions after some time you will get a constant EMF value this is due to the constant concentration of OH minus ion that means the pH value is constant therefore EMF is also constant the second type of graph is delta E by delta V versus volume of NOH added in ML. This graph comes under derivative method which is used for determination of accurate equivalence point. By this method you will get the accurate equivalence point. So this is the first derivative method for which we plot a graph of delta E by delta V versus volume of NOH in ML. The nature of graph is like this. Here one peak is observed 
and if you draw a uh, line from this peak on x axis then you will get a equivalence point this is the accurate equivalence point why because here we will get a accurate single value of equivalence point this is the first derivative method along with this method also we also use second derivative method for which you will plot delta e square by delta v square plotted against volume of NOH added in ml the nature of graph is like this and this is the equivalence point so both method first and second derivative method gives accurate equivalence point both are derivative methods but generally we use first derivative method for your information it is second derivative method so this is about the graph second of potentiometric titration of strong acid versus strong base